Hello everyone. So today we are talking about uh, Bits and Bridles. This is my episode two of my new series, From Star Stable to a Stable Star. And we're going to get right on into this. So in my first episode, we discussed um, Hackamore Bridles and Drop Noseband Bridles. We're going to talk about the rest of the bridles that are in the game today and Bits. Um, so let's get started. Oh geez. Okay. <laughs> First, we're going to start with bridles, and we're going to go from the most tame bridles we see in the game to the most crazy ones. Okay. Good God. Starting off, we have your standard English bridle. This was the first type of bridle that was added to the game. It's been in the game the longest. Uh, I know you've seen this type of bridle before. So an English bridle is a bridle that can have various types of bits attached to them, and they always, most often have a cavacin. So a cavacin is this piece right here. It connects to the back of the horse's head, and it connects here. And so what your cavison does is it holds the horse's mouth shut. Um, this is the most common type of bridle, and there are so many different types of English bridles, uh, including the snaffle bridle, waymouth, uh, light rider, drop nose band, and hackamore. So the drop nose band and hackamore bridles we talked about last time, those are English bridles. And yes, the hackamore does have a bit. It's just on the outside of the mouth. They uh, All English bridles have bits for the most part. Okay, standard western bridle. This is the um, the form of the one that you see in game. So um, there are different types of western bridles. Um, the main styles, uh, one is simply, so just it connects from the bit and just around the back of the head, and that's just it. It's just this one piece of leather that goes around the back of the head. Uh, the other style is this one right here, where it has the chin strap and a brow band. So that's just um, that's just to hold the bridle on to make sure it doesn't just slip over the horse's head, which can happen. It, it's not that common, but it does. And the last um, style of western bridle is this uh, main headpiece right here that just goes around the back of the head, and then one ear loop. That is one that you see in the showing world most often. Um, so this is the kind that you see in SSO. And the main difference between Western and English bridles, well, first of all, is going to be the bit types. There are different bit types for these bridles. And the uh, the English bridle has a cavison where more often than not, the Western bridles don't. There are Western bridles that do have cavisons, but most of them don't. Now we get the bozel. Okay. A bozel bridle is a bitless bridle with a rawhide nose piece and only one band connecting around the horse's pole. For those of you who forgot last time, the pole is the top of the horse's head. Um, the reins tie down to the bottom of the bozel, and the control comes from the direction that you pull, and it's the pressure applied to the horse's face. Um, with the leather piece connecting to the rawhide ring, it is an easy breakaway point, uh, making it an extremely safe bridle for people traveling out west or are ever in the risk of getting their bridle caught on something dangerous. So, say that um, your horse gets snagged on something, if they freak out and they pull, this piece is made of leather, which means this will snap. So when this snaps, this will just slide right off your horse's face, and he'll be nice and safe, and he won't get hurt on anything. Um, versus the, um, bridles like these, they will break, but the odds are this one will fall off. This one's fine. But this one, they're less likely to fall off your horse's face, which means it'll be stuck on them, which can be dangerous if they're running. Um, it just depends on where they get snagged. So, oh jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm using a mouse wheel. Um, so these um, bridles are very, very safe for traveling and stuff like that. Um, this rawhide ring, also, it's stiff, so it doesn't really push too hard on the horse's face. So it's a very, very friendly bridle to use. Now, the halter bridle, and it, I've heard it called the Indian hackamore, but it's it's not really one. It's, it's a really confusing thing. You can't find too much on them, but this is what I use. Um, these are not in Star Stable, but I believe they should be. These things are awesome. So, a halter bridle is another completely uh, bitless form of bridle. They are made of rope, typically from a nylon cord, like this one right here. This looks a lot like the one I have, almost exactly even. Um, these bridles can be extremely dangerous if there is no breakaway point. So if you look at these, these are just nylon cord. There isn't a leather piece that can snap if they want to break away. However, if these things are properly tied, like these ones are right here, these are the safest option for your horse, and there's no pain from any control involving a bit. So if there's a breakaway point where you can easily untie these things, they are super easy. So for this one, all you need to do, if you see this piece right here, all you need to do is just pull that, and then the bridle's off. The horse can be free from whatever's going on. He can stop freaking out. You can let him go and go catch him later. These are a super, super safe form of bridle, and I love these, and I use this all the time. Um, 
There is also, again, no pain from heavy controlling from the bit, and they sit very loosely on the face, so they usually don't cause any rubbing either. Uh, some bridles, like this and this, um, if you keep these too tight, these straps here, sometimes they can cause a little bit of rubbing, which then um, makes the skin raw and sometimes causes bleeding in some cases, which we, we want to avoid that. We want our horses nice and healthy and pretty, like this beautiful um, flea bitten and uh, this chestnut with a bald face. It's actually not a bald face, doesn't cover the eyes. Oh, we'll get into markings and all that stuff later. Anyway, so um, these are also extremely easy to put on and take off. You can use the uh, the reins as leads as well. So if you look, for those of you who are confused at whatever the heck is going on, this is the only point that gets tied. The rest of this just stays intact. So all you do is you untie this and throw it over the horse's head, or reverse, you throw this over the horse's head and just tie it right here, and boom, it's on. That's it. These are really easy. I love them. Okay, now the most crazy. Medieval bridles. These things, I can't... Wow. Okay. So medieval bridles are strictly used for costumes nowadays. I have never seen someone riding around with something like this, uh, just on a trail ride or whatever. Um, they were used for some very strict control, control pardon, and they had many assorted designs. Um... I didn't know a lot about these, so I did a lot of research to try and figure out what the heck is going on. Believe it or not, there's not too much research on these things. So, um, many of these, many of the bits used during the medieval ages uh, resemble a brandoon, a snaffle bit, and a curb bit, and they're still very commonly used today. So, they do use a lot of the same bits, but this bridle style is very, very unique, as you can tell. So, however, these bridles are very often decorated with some extreme degree of uh, bit rings and shanks, and they're frequently covered with large ornamental bosses. We're going to get into what the heck a boss is, because even I didn't know. So, these designs are extremely extravagant and severe, and they're more most often not used today. So, here's our tangent slide. What the heck is a bridle boss? So, I had to look into this because I was confused. A bridle boss is also known as a cheek piece. They are decorative and a metal piece that attaches to the side of the curb bits. And they were used during the colonial period. They are often made of copper and have two tabs or integrated holes that allow them to attach to the bit with rivets. Um, bridle bosses conceal the area with bit mass pieces and cheese can uh, cheek. I'm so sorry. Bridle <laughs> it conceals where the bit's mouth pieces and cheek pieces attach. Okay. So, if we look, that would be this thing right here. Okay, so let me explain what's going on. It's, <laughs> it's rather confusing. So this circle here, and it go leads up to this and attaches to this, and then it comes down here. So this is your shank, and then this piece right here, this circle thing, is your boss. So this is just, basically it's just like a decorative thing. It's a design choice um, for this bridle. Interesting picture, I know, but that was the uh, the best example that I could find. It's these little pieces. Okay, uh, there's not one on this one, and you can't really see if there's one on that. So yeah, that that's basically what they are. They're little design things. Okay, more about medieval bridles. So what were they used for? Why aren't they used anymore? What's the big deal? Um, it's super hard to find information on these such things. So I, before we continue, what were they used for? They they were just, just bridles. I mean, horses back in the day during the medieval era were used either for work or for war. So these bridles were never used on work horses. They were used on war horses, and they were used for the rider to control them during war. Why aren't they used anymore? Um, we can all agree that this is a little much. Uh, this is a little excessive. So um, what's the big deal? I mean, they're pretty. That's probably why Star Stable added them, because it's a neat little design. Like, for example, these ones. Um, these are all very, very pretty. Um, anyway, so I'm going to make an educated guess as to what these bridles were used for and the different designs that are in Star Stable, so all of our three designs here. Um, what is the big deal with them? What, why were they added? You know, what were they used for? We're going to talk about that now. So here's your little disclaimer. I'm pulling information from various sources, and this is all a speculation. This is all an educated guess um, of what these bridles were used for. I know what a few of them were used for. But, um, oh jeez, for example, like the, the, the horns and stuff, I'm just, I'm going to make an educated guess, for, for the, the cross bridle, I'm making educated guesses. Okay, so let's start with the horn bridle. These horns 
were for the horse's defense. They were not an offensive thing. Horses don't run around smacking their heads into people trying to spear them on on horns. That is not what that's used for, even though that'd be mildly entertaining. Um, <laughs> so this bridle here, what we're going to assume, um, what we are going to assume is that they are um, for the horse's protection. So say that someone was going to try and uh, grab the horse's bridle, because if you are in battle, you want to disarm a rider, and the best way to disarm a rider is to take off his horse's bridle. If he doesn't have a bridle, he can't control his horse, and if he can't control his horse, then he he, he can get killed. He's easy. He's an easier target. So, um, what people would do is you'd always reach up here to pull it down over the horse's pole. So, these spikes are probably to prevent people from doing that. It's to make sure that people don't reach up and grab the rider's bridle so they can pull it off. Um, this one right here, it connects in multiple different places. So, it connects here and here and the same on the other side. So, what I speculate that this style was used for, let's say that you're in battle and uh, part of your bridle gets cut. There are still other straps here to hold your bridle on the horse's face. So... For example, if we looked at a bridle like this, for example, if this right here got cut, your bridle's gone. You cannot control your horse. Let's look at um, this type of bridle, which didn't exist at the time, which, you know, if this got cut, you still wouldn't be able to control your horse because this caftison doesn't connect to the bit. This just connects back up here. So in these two styles, and obviously this style and this style as well, um, if you cut this, if you cut these pieces here, here, and here, you wouldn't be able to control the horse anymore. So I speculate that, here's a better example, um, so if you cut here, you still have this holding your bridle together. And this is actually, yeah, for that you can still hold this bridle together. I could be completely wrong, but um, styles like that, that's at least what I think it would be used for. Uh, it makes sense to me. <laughs> I, again, I could I could be completely wrong, but um, I think these just multiple th pieces are used to then make sure that um, yes, that you can still control your horse. Now this design, I'm going to assume that this faceplate again is for the horse's protection, is to protect the horse's face uh, in case it gets hit with anything. It's just so the horse has protection there, and again, it connects here. So if this piece is snapped, you can still use this to. This is still connected to hold on to your horse, so you don't lose control. Um. So another theory. This. Let's look at face places then. Plate face plates then. These are not in the game, but um, face plates like this, for example, these were used for defense. So if you had this on your horse. If they took a hit to the head, it wouldn't hurt them as bad because they'd have this to protect them. And also with designs like this, it's really hard to tell in this picture, but they have um, raised uh, raised pieces for over the eyes here. Um, and what this does is this blinds a lot of the horse's vision. Um, those of you who don't know, horses have a very, very wide um, field of vision. So if you can block off some of the field of view, then they are not going to be able to see as much as uh, as much of the action, and they're less likely to get spooked. So they are probably so these designs are to protect the horse's face as well as to keep it from spooking during war. So um, let's move on. Okay, so when we talk about protection, what are the parts of the horse's face that you want to protect? This is just a little addition. Um, I found out you can draw with this, and I am so... Oh, wait, that's not the right tool. Um, I'm so happy. This is so cool. Okay, so just a little... Another thing. When we're talking about medieval protection for horses like this, what are we protecting and why? So we're going to protect the horse's brain. So where is the horse's brain? You would think that it'd be up here, but that is actually not true. So how do you find a horse's brain? Well, we're going to use our lovely chestnut right here to, to show us. I tried to pick one with um, very little forelock, because the forelock gets in the way. So, if you want to find a horse's uh, brain, you don't look up here, because this is not where their brain is. That is way too high. What you do is you take a, you take a line, you draw a line from the ear to the eye. Oh, that is the most messy line I've ever drawn. And from the ear to the eye. So your horse's brain is going to be roughly right in this area. That's where your horse's brain is. It is way lower on the head than you would think. So let's do it here. 
So the brain is going to be right in this area roughly. And on this one, it's going to be, oh, I did not mean to make that line and I can't get rid of it. Oh, well, it's going to be right up in here. So that is where your horse's brain would be. So when we have designs like this or designs like this, not so much this one, this one's way too low, uh, designs like that as well. We are trying to protect people from getting to the horse's brain so we can keep our horse with us during the fight. Okay, let's talk about bits. So we're going to be starting with the harshest bits and we're going to be ending with some of the nicer bits. Um, but first we're going to talk about the anatomy of a bit. So the reason why I flipped this image over here, this is a, uh, we're going to start with the curb chain because that's, yeah, this is a curb chain and that's supposed to be down here, like under the horse's chin. So I just flipped that so you could visualize where the curb chain is supposed to be. It does not go over the horse's nose. Um, let's see if any of these have a curb chain. No, 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 no. Okay, well, if they did have a curb chain, they connect right here. That's where your curb chain would be. Okay, so now that we know that's where our curb chain goes, let's look at the rest of the bit. Um, so this is your purchase. That's this bar right here and here. Your port is this raised port here. Uh, the whole thing is called a mouthpiece. So these are your shanks, and we'll get into shanks in a minute because this is a bad example. So this is your rain rings, this is where your reins would connect, and then so this is under, and that's where your curb chain goes. So your curb chain should your curb chain would be down here. Alright. Shanks. The this is a much better example of a shank. So what is a shank? A shank is a long piece of metal connecting from the bit to the reins to the headstall. And shanks are often used. Oh, here's a curb chain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> shanks are often used uh, for easy leverage to enable the rider to have more control on the bit with less pressure. However, these can be used to cause extreme pain with certain bits, and we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, here's, a, here's an example of a curb chain right here. That's a curb chain. Okay. Correction bits. We're going to start with these. These are the worst of them all. Um, these aren't in SSO, but we're going to talk about them just because they're really bad, and I think people should know about this. So let's do, um, let me show you. Okay, so if this is in a horse's mouth, this is going to be flat against its tongue until you pull on the reins. So your reins are connected here. So this this is your these are your reins. So this is flat in the horse's mouth until you pull on those reins. So that means you pull lever, you put pressure here and it pulls up. So then this comes forward and drives into the roof of the horse's mouth. So this connects to your bridle. So your bridle is right here. So these correction bits are an extremely cruel bit that drives the very high port. So this is your port here, drives the high port um, into the, t the roof of the horse's mouth when the reins are pulled. Uh, this causes extreme pain, and if used incorrectly, this can lead to permanent mouth damage in your horse. This is a super abusive bit. Um, these are used for, by certain trainers for a very short amount of time to just correct the horse's behavior, and they're often switched back to a tamer style of bit afterward. Notice right here, as we sedated, they are why they're called correction bits. They are used to correct a certain behavior. These are not a permanent type of bit, because this is awful. So if we look... Um, right here, you can see how these shanks are a little straighter than these, but you can see the bit is supposed to lie flat in the horse's mouth like that. So then when you pull, the bit comes up like that and then drives into the roof of the horse's mouth and causes a lot of pain. Is there an eraser? There is an eraser. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's keep going. A curb bit. These are not an SSO, but these are also important to learn. Uh, these are traditionally a Western bit. And so basically, if we um, if we were looking back at our bit, our, our bridle types, um, this style bridle would have most likely have one of these bits. Um, yeah. Okay. So they're traditionally a Western bit, and the curb is a lever action. Um, so basically, a lever action means when you pull here. It, it, uh, this pulls forward just exactly like this one. These are both um, lever action bits. Um, when the reins are pulled, the port is driven into the horse of the roof, the, the roof of the horse's mouth, causing pain and forcing the horse to yield to the bit. This style bit is again used for uh, used in a lot of Western bridles, and it is used for horses that are pulling carriages. You'll find this bit a lot on carriage horses, which again I don't agree with. So um, do a little bit of drawing here. So this is your horse's bridle. This goes in the mouth, and then your reins are connecting down here. Okay, oh goodness. Here we have the snaffle style bit. 
A snaffle bit is one of the most common types of bits, very common in the um, English bridle, for example, the snaffle bridle. Um, they're the most common and the mo one of the most tame types of bits. I don't know why I said the most. It's one of the most. It's not the most. Um, they're very simplistic in form, and yet they can be very cruel if they don't have a French link um, breaking the pieces of the, the bridle. So if it is not present, like in these styles right here, this piece right here, we talked about this in the Icelandic video, this will, if this bit folds up like that, if you try and fold the bit, it will pinch the horse's tongue and cause a great deal of pain. So we don't, we don't like that kind of style. We like this. This is called a French link. So what this does is it has two different um, metal pieces. So um, these pieces of the bridle right here are connected to the French link. And that doesn't make this, um, this pinch happen. So this is a much safer and a very tame style of bit. Now, okay, don't know why that showed up late, but uh, this is the Mullen bar bit. And um, this is the bit that is used in the medieval bridles in game. So if we take a look back at this one and this one, and this one actually, these are all Mullen bar bits. Um, so yeah, that is, so this is in Mullen bar. These bits are very plain and they have no points along the bridle, which, uh, which pinch the horse's mouth or their tongue. Um, however, they are very solid and very thick, so pulling too hard will hurt them. However, just for simple control, these are the safest and most gentle. So even though they had these long shanks, when you pull, there's nothing here that's going to be driven into the roof of the horse's mouth. So these do not... There's not a lot of pain involved in these bits, so these are a very tame style of bit. So, um, what would I personally recommend? This is just my opinion. I don't recommend bits at all. Um, personally, my favorite, like I've said, I'm very biased towards these. I love halter bridles, and this is what I use. I'm always biased towards no bits, but if you are going to use a bit, I would recommend a mullen bar, or um, I would recommend one of these uh, French link snaffles. So, that is my presentation. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, this one's a little longer than the last one, but that's as to be expected. Do you want me to review more bridles? If there are any that I missed or any bits that I missed, please um, put them in the comments if you want to see a video on it. I think next up we might do saddles. I think that would be interesting. Um, please tell me what you think, uh, what you want to see next. I'm very, very curious. I want to teach you guys what you want to know, and I think that would be fun just to get some feedback from you guys. So again, like last time, I'm going to put all of these links into the description so you can read up on these and um, uh, review what I have said. And if you don't agree, you can check my sources. Again, um, I recommend if you want to critique me, please do it in a very nice way. I, I always am open to a discussion, but please make sure that it is mature and uh, friendly for everyone involved. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode.